Hello viewers, my name is Alan and welcome to my home workshop. In this video we're going to have a look at a project I did to fix the hinge on the door to a shower cubicle. So what I had to do was um, deal with the fact that the shower recess door uh, wasn't closing properly. The bottom of the hinge was breaking away from the, the frame and the door and also the catch not surprisingly wasn't uh, aligning correctly anymore. So the job was to get the door off and uh, sort the hinge out. So I thought uh, this might be an opportunity to pass on a couple of tips I've picked up to do with pop rivets. Um, the first uh, tip being that when you go to put a set of pop rivet into a piece of sheet metal, you want the hole for the pop rivet to be slightly oversized. So for a 1 8 pop rivet you don't use a 1 8 drill, you use a number 31 drill which is slightly oversized. So now the pop rivet will just easily go into that hole. But if you drill it an eighth, it'll be really tight. You can sometimes you can force it in. It's just more trouble than it's worth. So number thirty-one. So that's the first thing. Second thing, I'll just get my pop rivet. It helps with pop rivets to understand a little bit about how they actually work. So if you look closely. What you have is a metal shank um, which this fits on and in fact you can knock that off the shank and then there's a, um, a ball shaped swelling at the end. When you put the rivet uh, pliers on and pull that ball goes into the back of this short tube and makes it swell out. And when the ball comes up and meets enough resistance as it's crushing the material that the rivet goes through then the ball is designed to snap off and when that happens this bit the, the long bit pops out and the rivet set but then this little metal bit with a little stub on it stays in the rivet and that's important to understand because if you ever want to drill the rivet out that will get in the way so I'll show you so if we just set the rivet and you see it pulling up behind and it meets enough resistance when you pull on the pliers that little head will break off and then we're left with the um, the shank which uh, sometimes falls out under its own steam and sometimes has to be knocked out but what we're interested in for the moment is the rivet so that's been set see it swollen up on the back and if you look really closely you can possibly see the back end of the ball thing in there now that's important because if you go to drill it out, the drill is going to get held up by that steel piece. So the tip, knock that pin through before you try and drill the hole. And the easiest thing to knock it out with is a discarded um, a pop rivet shank. And there's one still in here if it only come out. Let's come on. There it is. Right. So, using the A or the discarded shank, you put that in there. Now, I'll do this into this little pocket so it will catch the bit that comes out. So you can see it. Doesn't take much to knock it out, but you can see now that the uh, it's hollow all the way through and you might perhaps be able to see right through the rivet now oops if I could hold it in the right place you can just maybe just see through and the, the piece that came out is this little fella so that's the ball with the broken off bit of um, pop rivet shank on it. Now it's that which will get in the way if you try and drill the pop rivet out. So that's what you've got to get rid of. That's your, you could use the, um, the original size drill, that would be best. So, so the head's off. 
And now, we can easily pop the rivet through and out the back. So there's the uh, bit of the rivet that we've drilled out. This is the hinge that came off the shower door. Uh, it's just under two meters long. And this was the bottom, and I've put a lot of effort into trying to clean it up. But even so, um, the hinge doesn't operate very well at all. And I imagine it's because it's got a brass leaves but that the uh, pin is steel and it's corroded around that. So it does operate, but not smoothly. And I just didn't think it was good enough to put back. So um, I wasn't able to buy an exact replacement. But what I did buy were three um, 600 mil long uh, stainless steel hinges. And so I obviously had taken that long hinge off and fitted this back on. Now I used slightly bigger pop rivets this time. These ones here are the original size ones. I just didn't think, they just didn't pull up. Didn't feel very nice when they were pulling up. So I just went oversized on the rivets. So we've got three of these um, hinges on, which unfortunately doesn't quite add up to the, uh, the full length of the door. But that's life, so we'll have to wait and see how much water manages to sneak out through here. But having got them on, the uh, next thing obviously is to try and get the door uh, back onto the frame. And I had to do a, a bit of work on the on the frame as well, because the, um, as you'll see, this lip uh, on the front at the bottom of the frame was just corroded away. Had the same issue here of corrosion and you can't really see it but I put in a, an aluminium shim underneath there oh you can see you can just see the end of it there actually poking out um, and that was to make up for the fin that was uh, corroded off so the rivets would have something to pull up to so as soon as my uh, uh, other pair of hands, commonly known as wife, is able to help again. Uh, we'll get the store on, hopefully. Okay, so to uh, make the shim which I need to um, uh, support the hinge, given the material which has been corroded off the the uh, the frame, <coughs> um, have to make a piece of aluminium strip. Uh, eight millimeters wide and two millimeters thick and about that long the length isn't critical so i think i'll be getting out of this bit of um, scrap aluminium angle seems an easier way to do as easy a way to make the piece as any Put that in there just make sure this is settled down All right <clears throat> Oh, we don't need that. We want a milling, we want a, a collet chuck in there. Move that out. <clears throat> Using my Frank and Hammer <laughs> combined uh, spanner and hammer. Change on the machine here. Now I'll take the let's take the drill chuck out. <clears throat> it chuck back in uh, quick tighten and go and find a suitable milling cutter uh, I think this guy will do <laughs> big enough for the job <clears throat> uh, so one inch that just happened to match the collet that was in the collet chuck, so not that easy. <clears throat> now, let's set this up so that we can milk this down 
to two millimeters thick, roughly. No, certainly isn't critical. So we'll ground that, zero that. And I'm using, uh, just turn it up a little bit. So I'm going to use my poor man's quill DRO. So we've got the <clears throat> got the cutter sitting on the work. So we'll set this DRO to zero. And come up uh, come up two millimeters. Oh, that was a bit more than I needed to. We're close enough. <clears throat> Lock the quill off. And we're good to go. <clears throat> Let's turn the machine on. Right. So that, that angle is three millimeters, so you should be taking off about a millimeter here. And let's get started. A hand feed just to make sure everything's all right. Yeah, it's going to go fine. Come back for the rest of it. So that's given me my two millimeter thick piece of material. So now I've just got to cut an eight mil stripe off there and that job's done. Yeah, so we'll just deburr that. Make it safe to handle. Yeah, that's good. Something in there. that in and that corner is a bit sharp too yeah that's good okay so I decided that to cut that stripe off the fastest way to do it would be with a hacksaw then have to do everything with the machine doing
Alright, <coughs> so a bit of a clearance issue here. If we start cutting from this side. Oh, actually, time to break out a saw I very rarely use. <laughs> guy here it's designed for exactly this sort of thing mm, it's wandering off course that's not so helpful let's turn this around and do it differently <coughs> Finish the cap from this side. Right. But that cut is a little bit ropey so we'll put that in the milling machine and clean it up okay <clears throat> so the setup we need here to get this cleaned up you've got to hold this up pretty high but this material at two millimeters thick is thinner than the um uh, the parallel so what i'm going to do is grip it with this bit of wire and we'll sit that on there oops We'll sit that on there. Lift that up. Need uh, three hands here. Yeah? Right. Put that there. Okay. Oh, I wonder why it kept going down in the vice. That's better. Alright, <clears throat> so we're going to use a depth mic to find out how far the top of the parallel and bottom of this strip is from the top face here. And that will tell me how much I have to have leaving out, um, sticking up so I can trim this off to 8mm. And we've got 0.193 inches. Unfortunately, my I only have an imperial depth mic, so we're going to do some conversions. But 0.193 inches is pretty close to 4.9 millimeters, and um, that means we're going to have 3.1 millimeters sticking out the top. should be our 8mm by 2mm uh, piece. Have a quick check, it's only got to be somewhere near it. It certainly isn't critical. We've finished up with 7.9 for the width. Yeah. Yeah, 7.9 for the width, happy with that. And the thickness was um, Oh, that's pretty close, so happy with that. That would be more than good enough to be the shim to support the hinge. So you can see here all the corrosion which has happened. We've got to uh, clean that up a little bit. And then my shim that I've just made 
designed to uh, fit in there and support the hinge because the the back edge the, the, the original thing was for the hinge to sit on that edge and, and sit across these two pieces but because it's gone here I have to put some metal back to uh, to support it anyway I've got to clean this up a little bit more that would do that okay so what we're going to do I've decided that uh, it's not worth the risk of trying to take that screw out because it might well, the head might well come off, who knows, it would just cause more trouble than it's worth. So I'm going to take my um, piece of 8mm wide shim, cut it into two, and I'll have one piece mounted here, and I'll drill here and tap into there just to hold it in place, and then similarly I'll do a piece up from the, up from the bottom, cut it off there, screw there can't put a screw down there or it's risky to i might see maybe not in this case sometimes they have screws that come in into the, the extrusion and then you get yourself in a mess but i am going to find the hole easier to easier to drill in situ if i'm a bit higher anyway so that's what i'm going to do so i'll cut this and pre-drill those two holes and then have to drill the others in situ okay so it's my first of the, or the lower level shim so there <clears throat> and i'm drilling here to put a small screw in to hold it in place So that's the size for the screw thread. So I've just got to open up the, the hole in this piece and countersink it. Same story here. Two there. Come on, get in there. All right, there we go. Right, then open these two out with the counter sink, come back and screw them in place. Okay. Let's make sure these holes are deep enough for these screws. Yes. Yep, I think so. That'd be alright. Now, let's see if we can get this one in. Now we'll start with this fella. These are just the small stainless steel screws that came with the stainless steel hinges that I bought. Oh yeah. That should be fine. Should give that uh, hinge um, leaf all the support it needs. These are really wood screws, I think, but doesn't matter, they're going in. All right. So that should support the uh, the bottom of the hinge leaf just fine. Of course, I'm going to have to drill through, but there you go. So I think it's time now to uh, bring the door in and uh, see how much of a mess we can get in while we're trying to. Uh, Prop that in place and drill the holes. Okay, well I didn't have enough hands to record the, the uh, 
drilling and putting the pop rivets in. But as you can see, I've now got all of the <coughs> rivets in. Fine old game that was as well. But anyway, they're all in now. You can also see the setup that I used. So I clamped a bit of wood to the top of the, um, uh, the door opening to brace the door against and hold it in position and had it um, propped on shims at the bottom. And it wasn't too bad, all things considered. So does it work? Well, let's strip the supports off and see. Seems to swing all right. I'm happy about that. There is one issue though to address, which is that uh, the, I didn't get the door back on at exactly the original height, and um, I'm going to have to do something with this lock. It can be persuaded to go in without too much trouble, but it's not. It's not right. So some adjustments going to be needed there. Okay, well adjusting the latch turned out to be quite simple. So that's the job done. I've got uh, some gaps in the hinge because I couldn't get a hinge that was long enough. So it'll be interesting to see how much water comes out of those. If that's a, a big issue, we'll have to come up with another solution. But anyway, for now that's it.